Hi, I'm Scott Koblish, DC comic book artist, and welcome to The Void. I can't explain how I got here, but I can explain to you how to draw the Joker, the clown prince of crime. Joker is one of the most interesting Batman villains in that he's visually interesting and pathologically interesting. Villains are necessary for the heroes, just as the heroes are important to the villains. Over five episodes, we're going to focus on the villains and heroes in the Batman pantheon, with the final episode being a fight between Batman and the Joker. Right now, we're going to focus on the Joker. So let's get drawing. I'll begin here with a blue pencil to give a general outline and draft the through line of the action, adding in some rough details. I'm gonna start out by just giving Joker a little line of action here, where his body is going to be. And then we're gonna like, just play around with how kooky and wacky this guy really is. So I've just sort of roughed in loosely in blue pencil what the line of action is that I want and uh, just roughly where everything's gonna be. I'm gonna take out my pencil now, and I am going to start roughing in everything. I just wanna say that the first thing that you should do is just be gentle with yourself. Like, if something isn't working, it's okay to erase it. It's okay to like, just take stock and realize that something isn't working. However, this one seems to be working out pretty well, so we're gonna stick with it. The uh, position that I'm choosing Joker to be in is uh, a little different from Batman. He's a little more hunched over. He's a little more in distress almost. He's a little more wobbly. He's not exactly heroic. So what we want to do is try to, with his body language, spend a little time giving the indication that he's not quite there and not quite okay in his body language itself. So basically what I want to do is make sure that um, with my line of action here, I've actually sort of broken it. Like I've, I've taken the line of action and made it so that uh, basically he's in this curve here, but it's also broken and bent. So like basically I've, I've taken his legs and I'm gonna move his legs out in a, a fashion that doesn't quite hold him up properly. Basically, the thing that about the Joker is that he's really like kind of defies a lot of expectations about how people sort of are in general and how they should behave. So we're gonna take advantage of that fact. We're gonna put the hips up a little bit. We're gonna move the, the shoulders into weird spots, you know, and uh, we're gonna spend a little bit of time like uh, just making him as weird as possible. One of the things about Joker is that uh, he is a lankier and uh, much thinner individual rather than Batman is. Also, uh, I think that what I'm gonna do is adjust a little bit, just some thinking about it. I do wanna pull a little bit more of that uh, asymmetrical stuff happening in and just move the arm, the hands a little bit into a different spot. And likewise with the uh, knee. Normally when you have a, a hip up like this, it's because the leg that uh, weight is on is the balancing leg. But what I think I'm going to do is make sure that this is not the balancing leg, that there is no weight being put on this leg, because it helps to improve the sense that there's something wrong with him. Oftentimes when you're thinking about how you're drawing anybody, and uh, this is regardless of whether it's a joker or not, you want to give some thought to how they're balancing or standing on the ground. Joker, for instance, I'm going to have it so that he's balanced on this foot here, but normally the higher up hip would be where the balancing leg is. You can almost see like if I kept the leg like this, you would see that it 
seems a little more stable, but as soon as I kick that leg out from underneath him, he seems even uh, more unbalanced and odd and peculiar. The Joker is very skinny. He's not bruiser, certainly not a fighter in the sense that um, Batman would ever have to physically be frightened of him. But um, part of that uh, evil mastermind aspect of him that, um, that we can play up and uh, keep in mind as we draw him. He's more in the line of uh, someone who's going to be scheming, planning an evil deed rather than physically carrying it out. So. Joker's smile is particularly demented. Everyone always uh, overemphasizes it, and um, uh, for good reason. It's a, it's a really interesting like uh, visual, like uh, as far as I'm concerned. So even before like I I try and figure out where the rest of the face is, I try and figure out where Joker's smile is going to be, just because uh, it's kind of interesting to do it that way and like. It kind of dominates his face, you know. And then figuring out in the, mid the middle ground of the face, just a little bit above the middle of the oval, that's where the eyes are gonna be. It looks like he's just smiling, but if you put in the physical attributes of him like being what normally would be concerned angry or like, or sad or something like that, that's where you really get like the juxtaposition between those elements in his face. His nose oftentimes is um, flared upward so that um, it gives this odd juxtaposition where he's angry and he's like, and he's laughing at the same time, which puts people really like out of place. Again, it's any of the things in Joker that you can sort of play up as far as like uh, stuff where you would normally have an aspect of a, of a character, like, and then you can kind of twist it a little bit. That's a good Joker, so. I've seen his hair done a number of different ways. We're gonna do it the way that it's currently. He has a bit of a high widow's peak and um, it's a little bit of a angle on the top. Now he's usually got shoulder pads on, indicating that there's a weakness that he's overcompensating for. It gives you the ability to sort of contrast the width of his arm from his shoulders. It's when he's got these little shoulder pads on, it's pretty obvious that the rest of his body is not physically strong, you know, so. I made his wrists pretty tiny. He usually has like a, a little flower here. Sometimes he'll use it to squirt water or a poison or something like that out of it. The jacket that he wears has a really high lapel, but it also has these long tails to it too. And uh, those are fun to sort of depict as well. I try and keep it a little off center so that again, it's another aspect of him being not quite symmetrical. The shape of his head is a little bit longer and angular. It is a different sort of head shape. He certainly is visually arresting that way, just a little different from the way that uh, other characters are drawn. Joker also has uh, very interesting footwear. They are more uh, formal shoes, but with, um, they're called spats. So they're actually almost like a, something that fits underneath the heel and the sole of the shoe. When you're working with cloth, one thing to remember is where it bunches up and where it pulls apart.
The fun thing about uh, heroes versus villains is um, you really get a, a great ability to draw different body shapes, different activities, different acting. All these characters are acting for you. They're almost like um, characters in a TV show or characters in a movie or something like that. You're trying to get them to do something specific that their body language would help with. So, for instance, I might even like change this here. It seems a little too static to me. So what I think I would like to do is just to have it sway a little bit so that we get a little motion out of it. You know, I took something that was pretty static there and we can create a nice motion. So I am going to take out one of my pens. Uh, this is a, I think you saw this last episode. This is a, uh, a crow quill. Basically, it is an ink dip pen that I use that uh, very, very old technology from turn of the century and not this century, but turn of like the 1700s. My advice for kids that are starting to learn how to draw is um, I want you to just enjoy it for a while. Too often, everybody's trying to impress everyone else. And um, while there's an aspect of uh, being really good at uh, what you're doing, certainly you want to try and follow that. Any advice that you can get from any teachers or any, um, any classes that you can take as far as like learning how to draw or paint, that's perfect. But also, I want you to be able to enjoy it day after day. It really isn't until you get further into your career as an artist that you really figure out who you're going to be or why you're going to do certain things that you're going to do. And um, you have to leave a little bit of room for yourself to be able to be that person that you're going to be. So I think it's important to listen to your teachers and I think it's important to learn from everybody, but also just follow your own path you know it's uh, super important that if you're enjoying it you will find the things that uh, you will make your own when i was a kid i would uh i would take very long walks i lived way out in the country sort of in the woods and um whenever i could i would just take a path or a route that I had not taken before, just to see what was there. And um, I think that that's an important, an important thing for you to do as well. And you're not going to do it if you're just following the exact same things that your teacher told you. Certainly do the things that your teacher told you, but uh, I want you to add to it. So don't just do one thing, do one thing plus. And I think that uh, by sitting and doing the stuff on your own, that'll give you that time to do that one thing plus.
Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop using this pen. I'm going to start using a, a thinner, uh, more stable pen, one that doesn't have a, a lot of play in the, in the, the nib, um, in order to finish off some of the fine details. I'm going to do uh, especially his uh, corsage uh, flower on his lapel in a small, different kind of pen. And I'm going to start to like, really just like taking a look at where I can like add a few little tiny details um, to really flesh it out. I always know that I've gone a little too far in drawing it when I draw the little, little texture on the tongue. <laughs> so that's a pretty good uh, indication that uh, the drawing is complete. It is incredibly important to have a really good eraser. A really good eraser uh, will save you time, effort, and money. It seems like it would be the least important thing, but it really winds up being one of the most important things. And even from this, you can see that there's one or two things that I want to kind of sort of correct. Like, I want to give more indication of him laughing. I think that when I inked it, it wasn't exactly what I wanted as far as him laughing, so. Well, I think we are done with this particular drawing of the Joker. I uh, hope that you enjoyed drawing along with me, and I hope that you learned something from it. Joker is a really fascinating villain. I think he's uh, really interesting as far as a Batman villain. Batman is so dour, and the Joker is always laughing, but Batman is dour, but with a good heart, and uh, the Joker is laughing, but without a good heart. So I think that those are uh, some things to remember about those characters. <laughs> Now that we've finished our drawing, I want to share some insight into what happens next. Usually I'll take a scan of this image and the colorist will color in a digital version of the image. Adding color really brings the image to life. So if you really want to take your drawing a step further, try coloring it in. Well, I hope you were able to follow along with uh, how to draw the Joker. Just recapping a little bit, I wanted to sort of emphasize that I first started out with uh, what I thought would be a line of action. Uh, going through the figure, and then I tried to, to pace it so that we followed the Joker's legs. We sort of built little tubes to try and like give like indications of like that he's super skinny and super scrawny. I uh, made him a little off center from where I began the drawing in order to try and emphasize that there's something not quite right about this human being. And then as we inked it, we tried to sort of like just emphasize just how crazy and nutty he is. So. We worked really hard on the fabric and the clothing. The clothing that the Joker wears is indicative of his style and his personality and really like drives home that he is not Batman. He's not Batman's physical equal, but he's more than a great a mirror for Batman mentally. And really wanted to play up in the clothing that his clothing is uh, a little ill-fitting and also that he's kind of scrawny physically. His head is a little larger than a normal person that I would want to draw at that size, so. I really enjoyed drawing with you today, and I hope that you did too. You can join us uh, for some of our next episodes on how to draw the DC multiverse. In addition, you can check out my book, How to Draw DC, for more of an in-depth process on how to draw Batman, superheroes, and supervillains. Until next time, I'm Scott Koblish, and I look forward to drawing with you again soon. And who knows, maybe I won't even have to be in this void. Nope, looks like I'll still be here in this void.